Hummingbirds are fascinating and super cool visitors to our yards and attracting and feeding hummingbirds is a favorite activity of many people. The internet and social media are full of advice for attracting and feeding hummingbirds. And like most topics, some of the information is good and some of it isn't. In fact, some of the information I have seen can be harmful or even deadly to hummingbirds. One way to ensure the hummingbirds feeding from your feeders are getting food that is proper for them and doesn't contain anything it shouldn't is to make your own. Making your own hummingbird food is easy, cheaper than buying pre-made mixes, and ensures that no extra additives are included. To make your own hummingbird food, simply dissolve one cup table sugar into four cups of tap water. An easy way to remember this ratio is to simply look at your hand. Your four fingers equal the water and your thumb is the sugar. If your tap water is safe for human consumption, then it is safe for hummingbirds to drink too. You don't need to buy any special type of water for them. You can boil or heat up the water to help the sugar dissolve. Just let it cool down to room temperature before you feed it to the birds. Only use regular table sugar, not honey or other sweeteners to make your hummingbird food. Using honey or other sweeteners can make hummingbirds sick. You can skip the red food coloring when making hummingbird food. There is debate about whether red food coloring is harmful to hummingbirds, but there is no evidence that it is helpful in attracting them. So why take the chance when it isn't necessary? The red around the base of the feeder is all that is needed to attract hummingbirds. Not to mention, red is only one of the many colors that hummingbirds are attracted to. But that is a subject for another video. It is also easier to see any color changes or mold that may indicate the sugar water is going bad if your hummingbird food is clear instead of red. Hummingbirds are super important pollinators for certain plants, so if you're finding the information in this video useful, hover like a hummingbird and pollinate that like button. Hummingbirds should drain your feeders every one to two days. If they aren't, then reduce the amount of sugar water you are putting out. The amount of sugar water your hummingbirds consume may vary throughout the season. Adjust how much you put out accordingly. It is okay to partially fill your hummingbird feeders or even take some of your feeders down if your hummingbirds aren't drinking the food fast enough. Only putting a limited amount of sugar water out at a time also reduces the temptation to stretch how long you wait before replacing what is in the feeder. If you make more sugar water than you need at a time, store the extra in the refrigerator. Just let it heat up to room temperature before feeding it to the birds. The sugar water in your hummingbird feeder should be replaced at least once a week, more often in hot weather, or if your feeder is in a sunny location. During the middle of the summer, it isn't uncommon to need to replace the sugar water every day. If you see any cloudiness or mold in the water, then it needs to be replaced immediately. A good rule of thumb to follow is, if you wouldn't want to drink it, don't feed it to your hummingbirds. If you are going to be gone for several days, then take down your feeders and put them back up when you get back. The hummingbirds will go to other food sources while you are away. They won't starve because you took down the feeders. Hummingbirds can get sick and even die from drinking hummingbird water that has gone bad, so when in doubt, dump it out. Never top off your feeder with fresh food, and always take the time to clean the feeder before adding more food. Take the feeder apart and wash it thoroughly with dish soap or run it through the dishwasher if it is dishwasher safe. I will put a link in the description for a good, easy to clean hummingbird feeder. Having a couple of extra feeders is handy since you can swap in a clean feeder and then take your time to clean the dirty one properly. Use a small bottle brush to clean each feeder port. There should never be any black mold or other gunk in the ports. I'll also put a link in the description for some small brushes that can be used to clean the feeding ports and any other of the little nooks and crannies in your hummingbird feeder. Again, hummingbirds can get sick or die from drinking out of dirty feeders, so please clean them thoroughly on a regular basis. I would like to take a moment and thank those that have helped the channel grow by subscribing, and also thank those that have gone above and beyond by financially supporting the channel through our Patreon and PayPal donate. For those of you who would like to join them in supporting the channel, there are links to our Patreon and PayPal donate in the description. We also now have Super Thanks enabled on the channel, and the link to that can be found right below this video, kind of in that area, right there. Thank you for your support. If you are having trouble with ants, try using an ant moat or ant guard filled with water. Ant moats are plastic cups that you fill with water and hang above your feeder. The ants crawl down the chain, but then encounter the water and can't cross it to get to the hummingbird feeder below. Some feeders come with a built-in ant moat. For those feeders that don't have a moat, there are moats that can be added to just about any hummingbird feeder. I'll drop a link in the description for some super simple and inexpensive ant moats that can be added to just about any type of hummingbird feeder. 
Make sure you replace the water in an ant moat regularly because debris floating in it may allow the ants to cross the water. Also, if the moat goes dry, the ants will have access to the feeder. Never use anything except water in the moat as other substances like oils or soaps can kill hummingbirds. If you are having trouble with bees or wasps nectaring at a feeder, take the feeder down for a few days. Hummingbirds, bees, and wasps will switch to other nectar sources. After a few days, you may be able to put the feeder back up. Do not put oil, grease, or pesticides around the feeding ports to discourage bees and wasps. Hummingbirds can get sick or die if they get grease or oil on their feathers, or if they ingest grease, oil, dish soap, or pesticides that were put on or near the feeder to discourage pests. Placing your hummingbird feeder in a partially shady location will keep the sugar water from getting quite so hot and may help it stay fresh a little longer. But don't use this as an excuse to not change the water out on a regular basis. Keep your hummingbird feeder high enough off the ground and far enough away from branches, porch railings, and similar objects that cats and other predators can't reach the birds. You want your hummingbird feeder to feed the hummingbirds, not feed hummingbirds to the local predator population. Hummingbirds are territorial about their food sources and will defend any good food source they find. This is true of both males and females. Having multiple smaller food sources scattered about your yard makes it harder for a single bird to dominate all of the hummingbird feeders. It might not look as impressive, but it will probably be better for the birds and give more birds the opportunity to use your feeders. It is a good idea to leave your hummingbird feeders up for several weeks after you see your last hummingbird. You can also check one of the numerous sites on the internet that monitor hummingbird migrations to see if there are any hummingbirds still being reported north of you. Leaving your feeders up won't delay the hummingbird's migration south. Contrary to popular belief, hummingbird migration is triggered by day length, not food availability. However, it may provide a much needed energy source for any late migrants. You may also pick up a winter hummingbird if you leave your feeders up. We have an excellent Backyard Ecology podcast episode all about winter hummingbirds that I will link in the description. When we talk about feeding hummingbirds, we tend to think about sugar water and hummingbird feeders. However, hummingbirds need to eat a lot more than just sugar water. Approximately 80% of a hummingbird's diet consists of small insects. Planting native plants encourages the small insects which are vital to our hummingbirds. Also, nesting hummingbirds prefer natural nectar from flowers over sugar water and feeders. That is why many people report seeing a midsummer drop in the number of hummingbirds visiting their feeders. Planting native plants that bloom during the summer will provide your hummingbirds with their preferred food source. If you want to get a head start on figuring out what native plants to add to your garden for the hummingbirds, you can check out this playlist and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.